everyone, and welcome to Breaking Character LARP. My name is Roy, and today I'd like to talk to you about a little thing that <laughs> I always say, uh, a little thing, but like it's true, this one is. This is a little thing, but it really does pack an awful lot of punch. This is the B3 Imagination Studios LARP Flintlock pistol. So this is a spring-powered flintlock uh, nerf blast, for lack of a better word, that uh, all you have to do is just take a ramrod, jam it down, take your ball, and you got yourself a pretty nifty, handy little compact ah, blaster that actually packs a bit of a punch for what we're looking for. So today I'd like to talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about how it feels in the hand, how it operates, some challenges, and how I intend to use this at my next LARP that I go to. I do want to say before I continue that this is the DIY kit. This is the do-it-yourself kit. So uh, as you can see up there in the corner, I built my own. I, I bought the kit, stained it, glued it all together. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> But uh, I did want to throw that out there, that there may be some differences in mine compared to what comes out of the, the finished product from the store. The barrel and the trigger assembly is all, and also this part here, is all made up of plastic. Um, it's almost like a PVC pipe plastic. It's really nice and, and um, rigid. It's not going to break. It's not going to bend on you. All of this is actually a very sturdy construction. I, I really like that. There is a black rubber band that runs here, and I haven't really thought about how to replace this in case it does break. There are some big rubber bands that I've seen, uh, but that's one of the concerns I might have is, you know, what if this rubber band breaks or it gets old and dry rots, but that's a problem for future Roy. One of the things that I really like is this. The, um, the hammer, the flint, and the pan here are all made out of a rubbery material, and like you can pull the hell out of that, and it ain't going anywhere. Um, in fact, to speak of the ruggedness of this, um, I used this for a playtest. I went to a LARP playtest uh, a week or so ago, um, and I brought this specifically because I wanted to put it through its paces. I wanted to see, am I going to be afraid of using this out in the field? Um, the first time I pulled this thing out of its holster, I pointed it at somebody, got a nice position to shoot, and then immediately slipped in the mud, did a split, fell over, and boom! right <laughs> right into the dirt um, no problems whatsoever not a single one I hit the ground you know I, I was kind of on the ground a couple times not a single problem with this I you know the construction is very sturdy I know some people might be upset that you don't get that action of actually pulling the hammer back before you shoot but the reliability of this I think supersedes that I I, I, I know believe me I'm a Wild West you know, LARPer. I love pulling the hammer on a pistol. I really do. That may not be necessary for this. I'd rather go for safety. Shooting one of these is absolutely easy, and in fact, I showed people at that play test, and they were able to start shooting these within like a couple minutes. All you need is the ramrod that comes along with it. In fact, I kind of had a kit. I didn't... <laughs> yeah. I had my... Um my pouch here and I threw all of my uh, rival rounds if I didn't say that yet I'm sorry it shoots rival rounds uh, nerf rival um, these are obviously a knockoff I believe these are the little Valentine knockoffs that you could find online um, most of the most of the the rival rounds I've seen go into these have been pretty well so that's not usually a concern but I loaded up my pouch with with this threw the ramrod in here and pouched it up and it, again in fact nothing really shook around actually I think I put it this way yeah I put it that way locked it down and that way nothing came out so I had a little on my belt a little pouch here so I had all of my gear ready to go but when you are ready to shoot you pull out your ramrod and I found it a little bit easier instead of trying to load it like this. Um, I found it easier if you like kind of cradle it back like this into your hand. That way you can actually see the spring inside as you push down. What there is a latch, and again I'll show you in a nice close-up. As you push this down, you'll kind of see the, the end of the spring, and there appears to be. a spot that you can stop it in. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that whenever I get to the, the big musket in another video. Um, but that works really well. I, however, haven't had an issue with just 
ramming it the whole way down. And when I was talking to new people to use this, I just told them, ram it the whole way down till you can't ram, ram, <laughs> ram it till you can't ram no more, uh, and you'll be good to go. Uh, a few people tried putting the ball in first and then ramming it down, and I was like, uh, you have to ram it first. I actually didn't carry this around loaded too often. Um, I'm not sure the springs or the rubber bands, I don't, I don't wanna wear them out. I know that's always a thing with Nerf blasters. You don't wanna leave it cocked and primed for long periods of time because then you're gonna wear out the springs, then when you shoot it down the line, it may not work too well. Uh, so I was only loading it and shooting it <laughs> shooting it on a need to do bait pretty much a need to shoot basis as soon as I saw an enemy coming towards me pulled it out rammed it down I'm gonna put the hat back on it's just I hope I'm not casting too much shadows on my face so how do I intend to use this at a LARP slash you know how did this work in the field at a play test um, so all the LARPs that I intend on using this at has a specific rule set specifically for firearms in their rules. So it's not like a bow and arrow or not like throwing a spell packet where you can machine gun it and throw a whole bunch or boop, 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 hit a bunch with an arrows. These are intended for single shots, you know, a very powerful blast that hurts enemies. And for this purpose, I absolutely love it. You know, this is big blank energy, if I do say so myself. <laughs> that, that was the word choice for this. Um, in fact, at, a, at the play test, there was a group of people lined up in a row. I pulled this out aimed down the center of the group and they scattered and we all just stopped and laughed really hard for like a hot second of like, wow, like, yeah, no. Having one of these at you can, I guess, be kind of scary on the opposite end. I know some people may not like the slow reload speed of sitting here and, you know, cranking it down and putting it one shot in at a time. That's the aesthetic for me though. That's why I wanted something like this over maybe a single shot Nerf blaster or maybe the Busby um, flintlock pistol, which I'll be talking about at some point way off in the future because oh, um, stories for other days. But you know, I wanted that. I wanted that feeling of ramming it down. I wanted the feeling of taking an actual ball a, a musket ball, if you will, and shoving it down. There's a, an amazing feel to do that. It feels very cool to have that all set up. <laughs> it's fun to shoot. Uh, I, I guess the question is, where would you see one of these being used at? You know, we used to go to a pirate LARP that was set in the, the early, you know, late 1600s to the 1700s, Buccaneers, Army Mateys, all that stuff perfect setting. Um, there's a game that I'm, I'm going to that is a medieval game. It's called um, Memories of Gre Memories of Greywin. Greywin? Memories of Greywin? Let me say that. No. Can never remember the name of my friend's games. Memories of Greywind, where it's fantasy in a whole bunch of different ways, and one of the groups is, you know, the Buccaneer Pirate class. This is perfect. I think as long as your rule set allows for a firearm, a throwing weapon, a archery piece, I think you can make an argument for this. Again, it's not a, a thing like a clip-fed Nerf gun, you know? It's not like a hammer shot where you got a whole bunch of darts lined up in a row and you're just popping it off. This is a weapon that's putting you at a disadvantage to use. Would it be easier for me to have a bow and arrow? Probably. Is it easier for me to have two swords? Probably. I don't want that though, I want this. <laughs> I don't want dual wielding. I wanna pull this thing out and make a show of it and shoot it off and make people afraid of my character. That, it's an aesthetic. Just like, you know, a hat's an aesthetic. A costume's an aesthetic. You know, I propose that weapons can be part of your LARP aesthetic as well. I haven't even talked about the range of this thing. Um, I originally was gonna shoot some footage of me shooting at a, and, you know, I don't want to make fun of my LARPing friends or my nerfing YouTubers that I watch, but I just don't want to shoot a footage of me standing in my backyard shooting and being like, oh, you see that little ball? There it goes. There it is. Um, I, I don't know how to shoot that footage well. I don't know. But he's getting exactly what he did not want. If 
you are engaging with a target um, and they're not within role play range, are they going to take that damage? Are they going to take that effect? What I mean by that is, you know, if this thing could hit someone 200 feet away and you're sitting there lobbing this in at them, the balls that come out of this are not very hard. They're, it's not like an airsoft where you feel the ting of it. In fact, if you're wearing costume armor or real plate, uh, plate armor, you know, a real uh, iron or steel chest plate, and this hits you, you're not going to feel it. You know, that hit a piece of my, my leather baldric here, and I can barely tell. I, I think as long as you're engaging somebody in role-playing range, this is going to hit your target every single time. If you're shooting at somebody within 30 feet, I think you're going to be fine. I, at the play test, have shot this many times, shot this probably 25, 30 times, and I can only think of a handful of times where I missed. And it was either the player was 100 feet away from me, or you know, it was a hilarious time where um, I shot at a person as they were coming towards me, and I saw the ball just whoom, miss right over their shoulder as they then came and beat me down to the ground. Um, but for most times, you're going to be able to hit the target that you're looking for. What I mean by role play range is, what I mean is, you know, you're gonna pull this thing out, and you're gonna aim at somebody, and you're gonna, you know, call them a, you know, you scallywag as you're lining up and then pulling your shot. You're making that engagement with the player. You know, you're not just like hiding behind sneaking and sniping at somebody. You're making that role play of, I'm looking at you, you can't miss me, and now I'm gonna shoot this at you, and you're gonna take that damage. I think in that case, this is going to be perfect. I know some high performance nerf people are not going to enjoy this because it doesn't get the ranges, it doesn't get the speed that they want, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm not for I'm not here for high performance. I'm here for that role playability. I'm here for that aesthetic of ramming it down. I'm here for that aesthetic of pulling this out and making a scene of it as you shoot towards a person. In that regard, this will hit nearly everything that you want to hit. If you want to hit something further away from that, I make the argument that's probably not necessary. Imagine you're on a field of battle and you're sitting over there lobbing spell packets, you know, 100 feet, 50 feet away from you, and the players are just sitting there like, what the heck is hitting at my feet and what is being called at me? Like, what? Five magic? I can't tell what you're saying. This will be able to engage with players at a range where you could tell them exactly what's going to hit them, they know exactly what's going to hit them, and you are accurately going to be able to hit your target. I don't think it's a concern at all about how far this thing shoots. It shoots exactly as far as I need it to shoot. I'm super excited. I'm super happy about it. Every time I pulled this out in the fight, I immediately just had a giant smile on my face. Success! Final thoughts on this. Um, I think I sang its praises enough. I've made the argument that for a high performance nerf person, this may not be for them. And that's perfectly fine. That's okay. Not all of our hobbies have to intersect in that regard. Maybe you're put off by the, the price tag of one of these. That's why I would argue going with the DIY version is a little bit more accessible for some people. At that price point, this is easy for an individual. It's, you know, around the same price point as a pretty mid-tier LARP weapon. You know, you can get a pretty good longsword for around the same cost as one of these. You know, I think that's pretty affordable for most people. I think it looks awesome. I think it feels so awesome in the hand as a player to use it. I think seeing it on the battlefield looks so cool to see them being used. Um... I think it will definitely enhance your game if your game allows something like this to use one of these. I absolutely will encourage people to use these. They're so much fun. B3 Imagination Studios, I know you guys already have the pistols, you have the rifles, and you have the blunderbuss. Um, I don't know what else you could do to improve upon this, honestly. I, I you know, Maybe make a super cheap version for your NPCs. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know where to go with this. Um, I, I hope these are these are definitely selling because this version is is French kiss, you know, French <laughs> French chef kiss. I keep saying that. Th th this is this is absolutely perfect. It's everything I wanted. I was super happy with my purchase. I don't know what else to say. 
Uh, I've been dying to do a review of one of these. I finally got one in my hand. I was able to use it at a game. I can't wait to use it again. As soon as I used it, all my other friends were like, uh, where'd you get that thing at? And immediately wanted one too. So I think that if you are at a fantasy LARP, you are looking for some sort of a long range option that uh, is definitely making a statement. Me mateys, you cannot go wrong with the B3 Imagination Studio Nerf, Nerf, LARP Flintlock Pistol. Definitely pick it up at your leisure, at your earliest convenience, and you're gonna have a blast with one of these. My name is Roy, this is Breaking Character LARP. I hope you guys have a great day. As you can see over here, scrolling, wait, no, yeah, yeah, this side, this is more room. Uh, as you can see, scrolling over here is uh, our social media. Uh, I've been really bad at posting things online, but I'm trying, I really am. Um, so follow us for, for some more LARP talk and more goofiness that we like to do around here in these parts. These parts, I'm a pi I'm, I'm pirate. On um, these hoggy seas, me mateys, arg. See you guys next time. Ready, go. <laughs> that was fun.